Okay, here's the same set of wheels sitting on an HO scale number 8 turnout. Uh, I rendered this up so I can demonstrate the relationship between that uh, wheel tread thickness or the code and the, uh, the flange way and the frog point of a turnout. And uh, you'll be able to see how the two relate to each other and how it's, it's kind of a, a critical relationship between the two that determines how well a turnout's going to run. I'll bring this up a little tighter here and you can see. I'm just going to pull this across the frog and you'll see how the wheel, uh, the wheel sets just kind of skip over the gap. And I'll show you what's going on here that makes uh, this relationship so critical. When the wheels roll uh, through the frog on a turnout, what happens is the, the wheel rolls along onto the wing rail that's uh, shown in blue here and it rides along the wing rail until it catches the point of the frog, shown in green. Now you can see that at no point is the, uh, the wheel support, uh, uh, able to drop into the flangeway, into the gap between the two rails, because it's firmly supported on those two rails. So it just rolls along the wing, catches onto the frog point as it's handed off onto the frog rail, and it rolls through. And because of this geometry, uh, it will ensure that the uh, that the equipment will roll through the frog without any bumping or dropping into the into the uh, flangeway in the frog. Now from this, you can see that it's key that the uh, the flangeway is as narrow as possible and the tread of the wheel is as wide as possible to allow that to happen. It allows the wheel to roll down the wing rail span across onto the frog point and then roll onto the frog without without any bumping. A turnout built uh, close to the NMRA specifications um, or right on as ours are in the uh, fast track assembly fixtures will maintain all the relationships necessary to give you a smooth running track work when you use um, wheel sets that are set to the NMRA specs. Now I'm also going to show you the same thing uh, with the RP-88 uh, or Code 88 wheel sets running on uh, a turnout built to the same specifications. Now you can build a turnout to different specifications to work well with RP-88 wheels, but uh, an out-of-the-box ready-to-run turnout or one built uh, in our fixtures might have a little bit of trouble. And I'm going to show you what's going on there. These are the RP-25 Code 88 wheels uh, on the same turnout. And I'm just going to roll them through, and you're going to see how, uh, with the narrower tread on the wheels, there's less contact at this critical location when the wheel is handed off between the wing rail and the frog point. We get in real tight. You can see that it's possible for the wheel to drop down in. Now this turnout that's drawn here, you know, being drawn on a CAD system, is is 100% precise. But uh, a ready-to-run turnout or one you build yourself, there may be slight um, inconsistencies in it and it may cause this wheel to drop down in there. Well, this will be especially true if the frog point isn't as sharp as it should be. Shown here is a uh, what a frog point of, of some of the ready-to-run track work sometimes looks like where it's, a, where it's a little bit blunt as you can see in the end. Um, you can also get this too when you're building your own track where if you're not careful to ensure that you got the sharpest possible frog point. And where this really has an effect, especially with Code 88 wheels, is as the wheels are rolling through here, you can see that it's completely unsupported in this area. Right here it'll bump. It'll drop down into the frog and then click onto the edge. And that little bit of bumping action can be the source of some trouble. And one way that the uh, some of the ready-to-run track where it gets around this is they actually will will fill in the frog. The frog uh, flangeways will actually be filled in with plastic when they cast the turnout. And this serves a couple of purposes. One, it, uh, it aids in construction of the turnout. Um, it holds everything in place. And two, it'll solve some of the wheel drop problem. And then as the wheels roll through the turnout, it'll actually roll across this fill that's in the bottom of the frog. Uh, one of the problems with this is if the wheels, uh, if the flange weight diameter on the wheel, not the flange weight, the flange diameter on the wheel is a little bigger, a little smaller than it's supposed to be. 
and that can vary from one manufacturer to another. And what'll happen is as the wheels roll through the turnout, you'll get a bit of a bump as it rolls along and hits on here. If the flange is uh, the flange diameter is a little bit too big, it'll actually lift up as it comes through the frog. And if it's too small, it'll still drop into the frog. So it's not the best workaround possible. Um, but it is used by a lot of manufacturers, and it's it's used for that reason. The best way to use the uh, the Code 88 wheels is to actually build a turnout for that wheel with a narrower flange way through here. Um, and I'll get into more detail on, on how to do that and the repercussions of doing that uh, a little later on. So as you can see that there's a, a definite relationship between the wheels and the track work it's running on. Um, it doesn't matter how well you build your track work, it's only going to run as good as the worst set of wheels on your layout. So you want to make sure that you have all those wheel sets set to your NMRA gauge. And it's pretty straightforward to do. Just make sure it fits in the little grooves in the NMRA gauge and you'll have good running track work. Okay, the first uh, size that I'm going to focus on in the turnout standards is going to be the check gauge. Uh, the check gauge is probably the most critical size in a turnout. Um, it's going to determine really how well the turnout is going to run. Now the check gauge is a bit confusing and it's uh, the name check gauge is even a little bit confusing. Uh, what the check gauge is really doing is measuring the distance between the edge of the guard rail and the edge of the frog point rail. And if you look here, those edges are highlighted in green. Now one thing that, uh, a mistake I think a lot of people have made over the years is they set the, the guard rail relative to the outside rail. Um, and that's, that's not how it's done. The, the guard rail, shown on the left here, is actually set relative to the frog point rail and that relativity is the check gauge. The distance is the, the check gauge. And in an HO scale, uh, that's a, a minimum size. Um, and the minimum size is 605 thousandths of an inch. Now I'm going to show you a little better what the check gauge is actually doing. Uh, I'm going to move these wheels along the turnout. So what happens is the wheels are coming down, down the track the inside edge of the wheels, the back of the flange shown in green here, is going to come in contact with the green edge shown here on the guardrail. So as the wheels come down, it's going to, the guardrail is going to kind of guide those wheels along. And what it's doing is it's pulling this wheel away from the frog point. So as I pull it through, I'll stop it right here and we'll zoom up nice and close. You can see that there's actually clearance between the flange and that point rail. And that's maintained by this guard rail. And the amount of that clearance is going to be a, a factor of um, the distance of the check gauge. So if we, if we actually change the check gauge to a different number than, uh, than what's shown here, this, this one here is currently set to 610 thou, which is actually higher than the the size and the standards of size is 605 thou, but that's a minimum number and that's uh, that's important for the way that these standards work, that there's minimum sizes and maximum sizes. So I'm going to change it now to 605 thou, which is the uh, the minimum size that that can be. And I'll just update the drawing here. There. Now you've seen it move over a little bit. And it also made the flangeway a little bit narrower in there and I'll explain more um, how all these sizes relate to each other a little further into the into the series but for now I just want to focus on how going to the smaller check gauge sizes affected things. If you look now this wheel is still in contact with the edge of this guardrail as it rolls through and this wheel now is right up against that point. Now these this wheel set is set to NMRA specs with the check gauge of 605 thou. Um, so I, and if you look at the NMRA specifications, the check gauge on wheels and the check gauge on track actually have the same number. The difference is the check gauge on a turnout is a minimum size. Check gauge on the wheels is a maximum size. So on the wheels, 
the check gauge is 605 thousandths of an inch or less and on a turnout it's 605 thousandths of an inch or more so you can never get in a situation where you're going to have an interference fit down in here so I'm going to set this back to the original size of 610 thou and uh, again you'll see how that, that pulls those wheels away from that point point. and that in a nutshell is what the check gauge is doing <laughs>